They were extraordinary Dublin women. The birth and rise of Camogie in Dublin coincided with the formation of Come and Naman in the city and the story of women who showed remarkable courage and fortitude. Tilly Simpson was one of them. She was a nationalist from Drumcondra and helped form the Fairview branch of Come and Naman. Many Camogie players from Drumcondra and East Wall were involved. You do have women coming from every type of background, every walk of life, because they've got that common purpose, which is to free Ireland. Many revolutions that you see in the 20th century, it's, it's from one group of people. Um, but what you see in Ireland, it's, it's, it's across the whole uh, of society. You also have across religions. Um, it really is a moment, a turning moment in Irish history where people say, uh, we want independence now. Um, the, big, the big kind of rallying call in, in kind of 1916 would be, if we don't do something like right now, we're going to end up like Scotland. Um, and we don't want to be Scotland. Common Naman members, including Tilly Simpson, were to play a key role in the 1916 Rising. Seeing that Irish men, you know, ordinary Irish men now were able to, were able to play their own games in hurling and football, they began to argue, well, why can't Irish women play Gaelic games? Because, of course, what they, what, what they were saying was, look, Irish men don't have to come involved in British sports. We have the GAA for Irish men if they want to play their own games. So why can't, instead of playing hockey or lawn tennis, why can't women have our own Gaelic games? So that's where the Camogie Association started out of. During 1916, they, they, they play a big role, about 200 women fight uh, in 1916. It depends where they're based. Um, Eamon de Valera didn't want to have them uh, in his area around Ballsbridge, so they were sent home. But in and around the forecourts, uh, Eamon Count would be very keen for them to, get, to get involved. The Simpson household was a hive of activity on Easter Sunday morning as the rising began in Dublin. Tilly's brother went with his gun to the Jacobs factory and Tilly, a nurse, reported for duty at the GPO after initially joining up with the group in St. Stephen's Green. She was sent to the Hibernian Bank across from the GPO, but it caught fire after being shelled, and she returned to the GPO to help nurse the wounded as the British troops shelled the street and surrounding areas. And then the women are told on the Friday who were in the GPO, Tilly and, and so on, um, that they have to go because the place is falling down around them. And you know, what are they going to do with so many women? They, they, they're going to move the men out. They can't have all these women there. And they're told you know, to, to leave. And when people say that, you think, God, oh, they just totted off home. But they have to go through a war zone, bringing the wounded to Jervis Street Hospital. And then the Jervis Street turned the women away. So they're told, you know, just go. But then they come across a barricade at Capel Street and they come into contact with the military who then arrest them, take them to Broadstone Station. This would be Tilly and all those girls. But they don't know what to do with them. And so they're questioned in Broadstone and then they're lined up and pretty much told, you know, be good little girls and don't do anything like this. And of course they say, yes, we, we, we won't do anything like this again. And they leave and as soon as they're free, they hit the ground running. So the women realise the battle may be lost but the war has yet to be won and they are going to be central to when that starts. Cumann Amman received a huge boost in 1917 when Countess Markovich, one of the heroines of 1916, was released from prison following the general amnesty. Tens of thousands filled the streets of Dublin to welcome her home. In the war of independence that followed, Tilly and her fellow members of Cumann Amman played an increasingly important role. The police were very, very reluctant to search women. Um, uh, unless they had a female uh, policewoman with them and um, there weren't that many of them around um, so therefore women were used to, to courier messages, guns around the city. Uh, one example that we would know of is um, a gun hidden in a book that was dropped off the Gresham Hotel by uh, a common Amman volunteer um, to be picked up by an IRA gunman who had carried out an assassination and um, he would have then dropped the book off again at another hotel and that's how guns were smuggled around the city um, both volunteers never actually meeting each other, just passing from parcel to parcel. And that meant then he could go home or go back to work and not be captured with a gun in the, in the subsequent search. And that's how these guns, without their involvement at that level, um, the war of independence couldn't have happened. But when the civil war came about, which tragically saw brother fight brother and sister fight sister, Tilly was on the anti-treaty side. She did not accept the deal brokered by Michael Collins in London. In her witness statement, Tilly relates how she was involved in so many of the big danger spots. They were out there um, in the forecourts, 
um, in Moran's Hotel, Tilly is all over the place in, in, you know, where the battles are, Tilly is there. You know, she's at the forecourts then, she's at Moran's Hotel, which is at the end of Talbot Street. And once the forecourts fell, after three days of bombardment, the women are able to go in and out because, you know, they're women, they can get in and out easily, quite easily. Um, but she's there, like, there's, there's mines in Moran's Hotel, the place goes up. Then she's literally told to get out and make her way back to the block, which is where the Savoy Hotel is now, or the Savoy Cinema is now, and um, that whole block of buildings. Um, and she's actually involved in street fighting as they're, you know, retreating back to the block. Um, once that goes, she's then up in North Great George Street with the Anti Treaty Force Day Post. Then she's providing her house. Tilly was eventually arrested and interned in Kilmainham Jail after a huge cache of arms was found in her home. It wasn't pretty. Um, they were thrown literally into cells and half starved. So they are incredibly brave uh, to do what they're doing. And as I say, without them in that kind of wheel of moving stuff around the city, and particularly in Dublin, um, the whole thing would have, wouldn't have worked. Tilly remained a proud Republican, a proud Irish woman, and playing camogie in Dublin allowed her generation express their Irishness through sport. She was an organiser. She was a, a, a propagandist, she was a nurse, she was a revolutionary, she loved our country, she loved our community and she believed that she could make a difference and no matter where you come from, doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, if you believe in yourself, if you have that belief, you can make a difference um, and she and all our comrades, male and female, they did make a huge, huge difference to this country.